So every time I pick up one of my watches in preparation to sell it, I keep changing my mind. And this one is no exception to that rule. I picked it up this morning around about seven. Uh, I got it out of the safe and I started wearing it. And literally within an hour, I thought, no way am I selling this watch. It's a wonderful watch. And I, I really need to wear it m much more. But my problem is I've got so many watches. I put it down, put a, put a watch that I'm wearing down. Then I'll wear one of my other ones. And I, I, I tend to think, okay, this one's a great watch. Then I'll put that one down, wear another one. I think, okay, that's another great watch. And then by the time it gets round to wearing uh, this watch again or any other ones, it, it could be years. So I've owned this for about 18 years and I bought it brand new from JLC. Uh, this is my second JLC. My first one was the uh, Memovox uh, alarm watch. And I've, I've done a review of that and I'll leave a link uh, in the end of this video for that uh, video. And I've also got the Reverse Tribute, uh, which I bought, I think four years ago. Uh, and I've also got the, uh, I think it's the Polaris, uh, called the Polaris, the non-alarm uh, one, just a standard uh, diver's one with the inner rotating bezel with the crown up here. I've got to re do a review of those, of those last two and I'll get around to it uh, one of these days. So let me tell you about this watch. This uh, runs the in-house uh, JLC movement, the 878 movement. So all JLCs have their own in-house movement. It, it's very deceiving um, looking on the video. When you put it on your wrist, you think, oh my God, that's a big watch. And it is a big watch. Uh, from side to side, from here to here, it runs 52.5 millimeters. Uh, it's 29 millimeters from side to side. Uh, and lug to lug, it's 46.5 uh, from lug to lug, and it runs uh, 20 millimeter uh, lug. So straps on this are so easy to find. I've changed straps on this quite often. Uh, this is the original JLC strap uh, that came with the watch. You can see it's got literally no wear on it whatsoever. And I've actually got another spare strap. Uh, whenever I buy a watch, I always pick up a spare strap. Well, I always tell them I want a spare strap or else I'm not buying the watch. So they gave me an extra strap, which is still in its packet. Uh, this one is almost brand new because I tend to wear them on different straps. Uh, the good thing about JLC um, deployment, this is on the deployment buckle. Let me just show you it so it comes on the deployment buckle the good thing about this buckle is you can actually fit just a standard strap on it because you just undo it from there uh, where most would have a pin I don't have any straps here um, where you, you'd have the the tang buckle bit here so you can just put any strap on there which is really good so I've constantly been changing straps with this watch that's what I like about it, it a croc suits it really well but a nice good quality leather strap. Uh, it just looks really nice. So this is the Reverso Duo and it's the, the Grand Date because you've got the, the day date, the, well, the day function just there. And it's the Duo because when you flip it over to the other side, you've got a completely different, well, a completely different watch really because it runs at a different time zone. Uh, so it's a GMT technically, but it's more or less two watches in one. And that's one of the things I really like about this watch. It is literally having two watches at, at once. So you, if you get bored of the white, you can flick it over to the black um, or vice versa, just as simply as that. And you've got a new watch and it looks completely different. That's what's so great about this watch. There's not many of these around. Um, and when I was doing my research, when I was thinking of selling it, I only found one other for sale. Uh, the other ones that were were on sale were from websites which have been up for like five years, which have sold. And the only other person I know who have, who's owns one of these watches is another fellow YouTuber and a friend as well uh, called Jay Anthony. He posted uh, on his Instagram that he'd bought it. And um, he actually said to me that uh, on the post, he said mine was the only other video um, on YouTube regarding this watch. Um, I don't know if that's true, but I'll, I'll take his word for it because I did do a review on this watch, I think, probably about seven or eight years ago. Uh, so I, this wasn't a limited edition watch. It was just a normal stand watch, but I think it wasn't very popular. I think one of the reasons is what it's very big and thick. Look how thick that is. It, it's like I said, it's uh, 12 millimeters, but I think one millimeter of that is just the back case of it. So where the, the watch actually fits, uh, you've got almost a millimeter there, and then you've got the actual watch itself on its hinge. So it is a very thick watch and on wrist, it does feel very thick as well. The date window, when it changes, so it's got two discs inside. So 
they, they move independently. So the bottom one will move on the right hand side as the days go out. And then when it comes to like 22 or 20, when it will move up to the next one, they'll both move over. And then you've got the constant seconds hand running on the right hand side. And at the top here, this is actually not a moon phase, but it's a day function. So as the day goes on, it will move over to day and night. So that really originally when I saw that I didn't like I didn't like that at all. Um, I'm still not a big fan of it, but I can understand the reasons why they've done it because if you're using this as a GMT watch, uh, so you've got one time zone over here and one time zone on the other side, you want to know what if it's day or night on there. So it's 5 uh, p.m. here, but if you're on the, on the other side of the world, you don't know if it's 5 a.m. or p.m. But simply by looking at the uh, the day and night indicator, you know okay now it's uh, 5 p.m. and not a.m. and uh, so. A is very handy, uh, but the, the attention to detail on the, on the dial is fantastic as well, as with all GLCs. So you've got a Gila shade dial, half Gila shade dial, I would say, and then uh, around the, the edges, you've got the numerals. One of the things I don't like about um, the white faced uh, on this watch is the numbers, where you've got the number four and the number seven, where it cuts in, where the, the sub dial here cuts into the four, and a little bit onto the five and then the day function, date function um, cuts into the seven. That is a bit of a bug bearer for me. I hate it when companies do that. I'd rather they've just left that blank there uh, and probably left that blank as well. It, I know it's not, to me, it, it's just one of those things, what annoys me is because it feels like they, they kind of adapted a dial for the watch and they've just thought, okay, let's just cut out the four. Now I'm, I'm sure they, they designed this whole uh, dial with this watch in mind. Um, but it just looks to me like it's like a second thought. All right, we'll just use an existing dial and just cut out the four, cut out the seven, and just slot, slot those bits in. It's just one of my bug bearers. I know it's not not probably true, but I know it could be. So you've got blued hands as well. So, but at only certain angles. So you can look at it from here; it's blued. But then if you look at it head on, they kind of go black. Now, it doesn't have any anti-reflective coating on this watch, but it does it does a very good job of, about not having too much glare on there. So if you could look at it straight on, you can see that it's got, you can see some things, you can just about see my camera, but it's not too bad. Some of them are, some watches I've owned and seen, it's like looking through a mirror and that's quite annoying. So in order to set the, the date and the day function on this and the, and the time on this, you just simply use this crown. So you pull it out once uh, and then that will set the, the date but it doesn't, It this watch doesn't hack, which is really strange to me. I thought this watch would hack, but it doesn't. So it's, there's no hacking feature on this. So you pull the crown out again and then, then it, you can set the, the time. And then as you set in the time, you can see uh, the, day, day, the, the day indicator moves around. So you can see it's going from uh, day to night and night to day. So that's the one face of the watch. And then when you turn it over, you just flick it. You just, now to do it, I press here un unlock hook it and then simply just move it across and then click down and now you've got the the black dial function now this watch does have a eight day power reserve which back in i think this was back in released in 2004 back then there was just a handful of watches which had such a big power reserve i'm thinking panerai had that had a i think a seven or an eight day one uh, this one had it, and I think IWC. So there's very few companies which had uh, such a big power reserve. Nowadays, uh, it's like a minimum of like 50, 50 something hours is, is like standard. Um, some, most of them now will have like uh, eight hour, uh, eight days or uh, even five days. So it's become a bit of a standard now to have um, a, a big power reserve on, on your watches. But when this came out, I think it was a bit of a wow factor that we've got eight days and it's hand winding so you wind it now I wound it this morning um, to the max so that means I can just leave it for eight days I, if I don't wear it for eight days I can just pick it up in the next seven days it'll still be running and I can just give it another bit of a wind so when I normally when I'm, I am wearing this watch I'm not going to wind it again and probably until about when it gets to about two or maybe three days left of power reserve then I'll wind it back to the maximum uh, but it's great to have that. I really like the fact they've got that. So to set the time on this side, it's so so easy. So you've got the two buttons uh, at the top and the bottom. So the top one will move it forward 
and then the bottom one will move it backwards. And then the, the bottom here, you see it says GMT. So that's when you, you can see it's plus seven from the GMT. So on the white face, this is set to GMT time. So it's seven hours plus here. So it's uh, just gone five past five. And if you look on this side, seven hours forward, it is 12.05. And the way to tell it's that at night time, you've got a day night indicator here at the, at the bottom. So you can see it's at the on the darker phase, so that means it's nighttime, 12, and it's almost down dead center, which is mean, so you can clearly see it's 12 uh, a.m. now. And then if it was uh, p.m., it'd be up into the white section. So easy and clear to, to read this watch. It's very simple. The, uh, these are sometimes, when I first got it, they were a little bit hard to see. Uh, so you've got to really kind of focus, but as time goes on, you kind of know where exactly everything is. Just so you, if you want to go five hours, you can you kind of know where five hours is or nine hours backwards or forwards. So it's so simple to, to use. I just absolutely adore this watch. And yeah, it's going to be in my collection, I think, for another probably good 15 years, maybe another 20 years. Um, I don't see it going anywhere. Really enjoy wearing this watch. And it's going to be on my wrist now for probably for the next few weeks uh, until I pick up one of my other watches and hopefully I don't put this down for another good five, six years and don't pick it up again. Um, but some of my other watches I definitely have to sell because I'm losing out by not wearing some of these watches.